the April 1st Parks and Rec Commission meeting. Uh, let's get started with roll call. Commissioner Bigor? Yes. Commissioner Tom Bay? Sent. Commissioner Kumarapan? Sent. Vice Chair Shu? Here. And Chair Stanek? Here. Okay. Um, on the agenda, the number one, the first item on it is the ceremony, ceremonial matters and presentations. I'm gonna, we're gonna move that down um, in between because we have two pieces of the Rancho Rinconada, I'm sorry, Rancho Rinconada, the community funding and grants. Um, we're gonna move it in between those pieces to give staff a little bit of time to, uh, to calculate all the numbers and get back to it. So hopefully that's gonna work for us. So um, we'll move to uh, the second item, which is approval of minutes. I have a change or a clarification change to the minutes. Um, oh, I'm pulling it up. Uh, it's under the section um, talking about the community, um, the strategic plan approvals. Um, and it says, uh, Commissioner Tombe um, recommended to approve $200,000 for fiscal year 2020 and 2021 and 2021 and 2022 as Public Works determined. It was for 2020-2021 as Public Works determined and then to come back for 2021-2022 approval. So not a two-year approval, but a definite one-year approval um, directly. That's it. I also had a correction on um, one of my comments in uh, commission reports where I uh, talked about uh, going to the meeting of the Walk Bike Cupertino organization and I, it got put into the minutes as Walk By. So it is Walk Bike. Awesome. So I guess I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes from our last meeting with the two friendly amendments or I guess clarif edit clarification changes, whatever they are. I second it. We'll go to a roll call vote. Commissioner Vigor? Yes. yes. <laughs> Commissioner Tom Bay? Yes. Commissioner Kumarapan? Yes. Vice Chair Shu? Yes. And Chair Stanek? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, next, we'll move on to postponements. Um, I believe there are none. So we can go to oral communications. And this is a portion of the meeting reserved for persons wishing to address the commission on any matter that is not on the agenda. If any of our attendees would like to speak during oral communications, please raise your hand now. Okay, we don't have anyone raising their hand for oral communications. So let's move on to written communications. None received for this meeting. None this week. Okay, we will move on to old business. Item number three on the agenda the community funding application evaluations. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, Joanne McGreeny, Director of Parks and Recreation, and I am here with Whitney Zeller and Rochelle Sander um, to discuss um, the item for this evening. And I'm gonna turn it over to Whitney to explain the process that we're going to move through um, in order to facilitate this um, this item. Whitney. Thanks. So um, following what was recorded in the staff report, uh, and as Chair Stanek had noted, this is going to be a two-part. So we'll start by doing um, any clarifying questions from the commissioners, um, as well as doing public comment. And then from there, um, it'll be up to the chair to facilitate the meeting 
um, including how you guys would like to determine eligibility in that process. Um, but as part one of the process, we will um, compile your scores, which you can do digitally. I'll send you all a link, which you need to access through your uh, commissioner email. And then once you receive that, you can open it. Um, we will share our screen live to show as you input your scores. And then following that, um, we will take a short break to allow you to um, input your scores um, as well as discussion. And then um, we will close the item uh, to allow staff time to compile all of your data before returning to it after um, doing other business. Okay, before we continue, um, I believe Commissioner Kumarapan wanted to speak. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, since uh, one of the applicants, um, I'm part of the, one of the, uh, the, the organization, which is Cupertino Library Foundation. Uh, they're also part of this uh, whole uh, application um, uh, packet. So since I'm associated with it, um, I like to recuse myself uh, from this process. And I think as per what I learned, then I will be muted and then I'll be going off of the video and I'll get back whenever you all wanted me. Otherwise I can just go and sleep. No, I'm just kidding, but I will get back. And thank you for letting us know that. So I think at this time, um, unless you guys need any further clarification on the process, I think the chair can take over and run the item and we're here to help okay so i guess first what i'd like to do is if there's any questions on the process and then we will um, open it up for questions from our um, our audience and allow them to ask questions and um, then we'll bring it back and i think we can have we'll have some discussion if there's any and then we will um, be looking to update our our rankings based on the input that we've received, uh, as well as the other review that we've done individually. Okay, um, Commissioner Begor. Yeah, quick question. So I filled out the community form. Um, just for my notes, I, you know, I added stuff that, you know, so I remember when we had the discussion. Now, uh, when we have to email this to you with me, do you want my version or can I just give you the cleaned up version? So or whichever I want to do. <laughs> so when it's time to enter in the numbers, I'll be sending you all a link to your Cupertino commissioner email address, okay. um, which you can access and then you will insert your totals yourself into that form. Uh, oh, so it'll okay. show so I'm just going live. to put the totals into the form. I'm not submitting a file. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, the totals. Great. So okay. Thank you. Hopefully it'll be easy enough. I missed that part. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I missed that part. Then. No problem. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? Okay. Then I will go to our attendees. And what I'd like to do, if any attendees would like to participate uh, in this part of the discussion um, to make a comment, I would like Every, anyone who wants to do that to raise your hand now so we have a sense of how many comments we're going to be seeing and um, then we can move on from there. So right now I only see one person who has their hand up. Oh, now we have two. If there's any more, please raise your hands now. Three. <laughs> do I see four? <laughs> there we go. We have a four. Is there anyone else from, from the public who would like to um, be identified for comment? Okay, so we have four people right now and I, now that um, we've said that, I'd like to limit it to that so that we know uh, how many we have. And the first speaker will be Oren Mahoney. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. So I'm not going to reiterate what I told you guys, you know, a month or so ago. I just want to say two things. One is that uh, we are ready to work with the, the Park and Rec's team uh, to bring live 
community festivals back to the city. I think people are ready for that um, in a lot of different ways. And, and in particular, I was actually talking to a community relations person from PG&E earlier this week. And they really want to get out there and get their message on two points, sustainability and disaster preparedness. And both of those are key to the fall festival with our Earth Zone and our, uh, you know, uh, well, our, our disaster preparedness, you know, uh, health and safety fair. So uh, eager to have you guys support us and all the other good applicants that have been there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Warren. And thank you for not, we're not looking for people to tell us what we all just heard a month ago. So I appreciate you uh, recognizing that. Our second speaker is Matthew Dodder. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, this is Matthew Dodder, Executive Director of Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society. And my comment is very much like Oren's. I just wanted to let you know that I did not have anything new to add to the proposal but I was here to answer any and all questions that you have when the time comes. Um, so with that, I'll just sign off and, and save a little bit of time, but I'm here when the time comes if you wish to ask any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Our next speaker will be Raji Mahalingam. Raji? Okay, so I need to promote Raji to a panelist because he's using an older version of Zoom. So is that okay for me to do? I guess I will. <laughs> there he is. Uh, thank you so much for giving this opportunity. I rep I'm, I'm representing the Monte Vista Speech Boosters. Uh, which supports the Monta Vista High School Speech Club. Um, and I'm also here if, in case you have any questions. Uh, and I'm very proud to say that we really did a wonderful, we got wonderful score at the national speech debate just, that just happened at the National State, uh, State Qualification Tournament. Thank you. And we have about four students that got qualified to go to the nationals. Thank you. Thank you, Raji. And our last speaker is Jean Moore. Thank you, and it's Jeannie One. It's easy to <laughs> trip over it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, commissioners. And I just want to add to say that the Chinese American Coalition of compassionate care is in the room and if you have any questions uh we're here so thank you very much okay thank you and thank you for attending i will bring it back to the commission at this time and so i guess um i'd like to open it up for discussion in particular you know i wanted to um Go and look at the eligibility because that was something where a lot of the applicants had not been um, identified as eligible by the staff. It was still pending or open. And so I think um, I just wanted to go through that and see if any of those that were had not been identified as eligible, if there's anyone that any of the applicants that you feel really should be identified as eligible. Commissioner Tombe. Um, primarily in the segment of recurring, um, of the recurring ones. So I'm, I'm looking at the community funding grant summary sheet, um, the second tier in the green. Um, and I, I think if I recall correctly, a significant number of these were not eligible because they had previously received funding. Um, and I, I guess my, my two points are some of these projects are just different than the organization is the same, but the project is different. So I feel like if the project is different, and again, this is, we like change the, 
eligibility rules. And so we're still trying to work through some of these murky areas. Um, but I feel like if it's this, even if it's the same organization, but it's a different program, that's fine. Um, I also think that something for the future is if we make a eligibility requirement change, uh, it should have like a time for people to adapt to it, I guess. So that that's my only, it's, it's primarily you, focused on that second part. Do you, do you want to um, identify which uh, of those applicants in particular? Um, yeah, I'll need to pull up the, okay, so, um, okay, sorry, I'm pulling up the exact specifications for each of these. I think the first one, let me just go back here. So the first one was the Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society, and they were asking for new equipment. And oh my gosh, there's so many pages here. Okay. Um, yeah, that was, uh, they were not considered eligible because they were marked no as organization has previously been awarded uh, for the purpose, most recent funding in fiscal year for this, but they're, what they're asking for, I felt was different than what exactly they did last year, same organization, um, but they weren't asking for equipment, if I recall correctly from last year's application. Um, and then, okay, sorry, moving, there's a lot of pages in between the overviews for each of these sections. Um, the next one is West Valley. Um, it was marked for the same purpose. Um, The following one was the Santa Clara. So I, sorry, I guess Carol, I'm asking for, I need some clarification on what exactly you're looking for. So I was looking for, um, you said there, there were some organizations that you felt should be eligible. So I wanted oh, to identify oh, okay. based on that, on oh. what you were identifying, which okay, ones do like, you believe really should be sure eligible, that eligible that were not identified as eligible previously? Got it. Um, so I would actually like all the previously not eligible um, in the in the repeats I would bring back as eligible or at least for consider our consideration. Okay, so there was some that were not eligible for other reasons. Are you just looking at that one, the ones that just had it for the checkbox for the same project? Yeah, but I have to go through and re-record because I, I believe most of them ha in that section that weren't eligible were marked as uneligible for that, that. And then there's a couple that like, you know, like the Chinese American Coalition for, for Compassionate Care, they were asking for um, uh, funding that goes, that's like ongoing operational costs and um, also had like an administrative component, but their function is inherently requires like a person to do this work. Um, there's not like material that they would need support for. So I would group that together with the function of the actual org. Um, so that was the, so so you you were calling up the Audubon Society, West Valley Community Services, the Chinese American Coalition for Compassion, was that? Um, yeah, the Rotary Club as well, and I'm pulling up their thing. Um, and theirs was marked also because it was previously funded um, and Euphrat Museum, which was also marked for being um, previously funded, but it was, um, yeah, for also being previously funded, so. Okay, okay, so that's a good, um, thank you for your feedback and then we can come back and, and see how the other commissioners feel about that as well. Uh, Commissioner Begor. Yeah, I had, uh, I had a similar kind of, uh, analysis on the ones that were new though. Um, so there were three that were specifically marked because they were requesting funds that were 26 or more, 26% uh, or more of the requested funds were allocated towards expenses, not directly tried. The three that, um, that I'm referring to are the, I don't know if I'm gonna say this correctly, it's the Kuriki, uh, which was which is on the list, uh, I guess, the, the last one of the new ones, um, the Monta Vista program. And the, um, the third one that I'm looking at that maybe um, should not have been 
I mean, potentially, if we can see to make them eligible, is that discovery counseling. Because all of these were marked for, for the same reason, 26% or more. Um, uh, the, the discovery counseling center had another issue as well. Um, so I would specifically like to bring Monte Vista and the Curiki into the eligible list if we can. Um, I, I, I'm okay with the Asian, the, um, the Asian counseling uh, services that were brought in and the Audubon specifically, even I would like those two to be brought back and the Euphrat. Uh, those are my three uh, from the ones that already existed. Okay, and so West Valley, sorry, sorry. West Valley, um, Santa Clara, uh, Audubon, uh, the Chinese American Coalition and the UFRAT. Those were the four that I thought we can bring back from the list that were previously uh, funded. So that was Audubon, West Valley, Community Services, um, the Community Care. Uh, yeah, the Chinese American yeah, Coalition. Right. And the UFRAT. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think those were the same as Anisha, but she also had um, Rotary. I think that was it. Okay. Um, and can you say the three again that were in the, the new ones? I don't know if it was you that was breaking up or my internet connection was unstable. Oh, uh, I, I can repeat that. Um, I specifically uh, want to look at, I really want to bring back the Monte Vista and the Curiki. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Curiki? And if Curiki, yeah. Uh, that is, um, and then the, the other one I wanted to look at was the um, Discovery Discovery Counseling Center. Um, there are a couple of things that make them eligible, so I'm okay if that's pulled off the list. Okay. I'm not too tied to that one, but I would like to bring uh, Monta Vista in and the Curiki in. Okay, Commissioner Tombe. Just kidding. Okay, Vice Chair Chu. Uh, so, uh, for the uh, returning applicants, I think for the uh, eligibility, I want to bring back the Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society and West Valley Community Services. Uh, and for the new applicants, I think the discovery uh, counseling center, yeah, they provide some uh, unique uh, services. So I want to bring it back. Yeah, just my suggestion. Okay. Um, so I, I guess um, what I'd like to do, you <laughs> just got her hand up again. I, I wanted to go ahead and, and give my own thoughts. Um, um, I think that, you know, we, we do have these criteria that were supposed to help us identify who we should be looking at. I think um, mostly the ones that I really thought should be brought back um, were under the returning, and that was the, the Audubon Society, um, West Valley, um, the Compassionate Care, Rotary, and UFRAT. So um, I felt that those all should really deserve um, consideration in our rankings. And um, I thought there were, there were issues in terms of um, some of the other organizations that were looking to use the grant for their actual operating to, to provide their program. And so that 
didn't seem like it really um, fit to me, but I guess I would at this point think that we might want to err on the side of going ahead and ranking, and then to the extent that those, you know, we'll see where we are um, once we see the rankings and the um, how the group does it a whole and the money. Commissioner Tombe? Um, I totally agree with you um, in that if we're making like um, Commissioner um, Beggar had said, oh, like, you know, she wanted to bring back the DCC, but her logic was the same as my logic was for um, like a couple, like one of the others where it was just like, yes, it's like the, even though it's over 26%, that is like the function is supposed to like be able to provide a community function. So I just think if we make, if we're going to make something okay for one group on a principle, then it should apply to everybody. And then same thing with, if we're open to having a, you know, something that had previously been funded or an organization, not a project, but an organization that had been previously funded, allowed to be eligible, then it should apply to the rest of the, um, those that were ineligible because of the same reason. We, I don't think we can pick and choose specifically which organizations we're gonna say are okay and not if they're both invalidated by the same thing, so. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So I, I think there's, if the other commissioners agree, I think, you know, I'd like to bring back those that have been identified. Um, so I'd like to identify which ones do we think did not qualify as eligible? Those that, um, you know, we haven't identified to come back that were not identified as eligible. Um, and one of them, and my, it's, uh, it's the one, two, three, four. It's the one that the program event is Raga and Rhythm. And I think that one had admin costs, but also the event was not going to be free. And that I think it said Cupertino residents would get, um, would pay 25%. Um, so that was a, another item there. Um, And then the other one, I guess, that was kind of puzzling to me was the Jewish Film Festival, which they actually identified their May 2021 festival for this application that just the funds aren't going to be available until next year. So I think that one has, it just doesn't qualify. Does anyone uh, have any comments on that? Disagree? Agree? Um, I'm fine uh, with taking out the the raga and rhythm, and as well the um, the Jewish festival. Um, Yeah, I'm okay with those two. Vice Chair Shu? Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Chair Stanick. And uh, actually, I, I give score to uh, these returning applicants because uh, it's the first time we try to add the discussion of uh, eligibility in our meeting. So I still give them score just in case if uh, most uh, commissioners they still want to evaluate. So we have score already. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I do think the way the whole program was set up, we have a whole a whole category for returning applicants. So it seems to me that that really was anticipated as as part of the program that um, these these nonprofits would come back either with a different project in a different year, or that they do something annually that is something um, that is a benefit to the, the community, but it is budgeted separately every year. And so it's its own project. And so I, I think it's something we can clarify um, going forward in the policy. And I think hopefully that will help staff out as they go through this. Um, so <laughs> we can all come and look at these things in the same way. So uh, is there any other discussion? Okay. so. 
do we want to take just, um, just to be clear? Yeah. So what we're saying is we're just not considering those two, but we will be considering the rest, you and returning for the funding. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to be clear. We stated that. So that was my that was my uh, interpretation of the discussion. If okay. anybody disagrees, let me know. And and so then the other thing is we wanted to give you an opportunity to take take some time um, based on the community input to review your scores and and to make sure you're comfortable with them. So at this point, I guess for those two, I could. We could either put in their score and say they're ineligible or make it zero. Do you have any? Since thoughts? I have my hand up, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to take down. Um, my suggestion is if we're not going to fund them, we may as well not consider that. And so make it a zero. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Any other comments? Agree? Disagree? Ambivalent. Yeah, ambivalent. I'm just saying, like, I guess I'd have a question with that. Um, would there be any benefit either way to giving a score or not giving a score as to how that carries over to what's provided to council? That, that's the only... That's the only other thing um, is if council sees one that they really want to get underneath um, and, and see the, the merits of it away from whether it's eligible or not, because I mean, we're sort of a, a way station for council. We are not the deciding votes here. We are giving a recommendation. And so I guess the more information we can give council uh, on these, the better. So considering that, I think that's a great comment, Whitney. I think so if I, I would say we could go ahead and give them a score and I would hold them out separate somehow or mark them as the commission felt they were ineligible. Um, how do the other commissioners feel about that? Commissioner Tom. Yeah, that, that, that works. Okay, good. So are we ready to... Um, you want to take a couple minutes just to review your scores one last time. And Whitney, are you ready to um, send us the scoring worksheet? And I guess the way this is going to work is it's it's one like Google. It's not a Google worksheet, apparently, but it's like that, where we can all be entering at the same time, and it will identify who is entering. So if Commissioner Tom Bay starts entering numbers in my column, we'll call her out on that. If I start entering numbers in somebody else's column, call me out on that as well. Yes, I think um, when you give me the thumbs up, I can send out the link to everybody. I think we're ready to do that. Okay, send away. Let us know when you've sent it. Should have gone out. Please let me know if for some reason it doesn't come through. We will measure the speed of the internet right now. Not yet. So I guess one easier thing is that we'll just be able to put all of our scores in. Um, and so we shouldn't have to be skipping anything. So we should be looking for this in our email, right? In, our in your Pertino Pertino email. email. Ah, got it. You got it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I got it. 
but it's okay. Let's see, this is going to be very interesting. Okay, where'd it go? Okay. Hey, if you're like me and you did it on the Excel, the Excel order and this order are not the same order. So just. They should be. There may be some extra rows. That she added a row. Oh, there. that's why it's being weird on my thing. Okay. Never mind. Okay. For that clarification. Yep, you're right. That's, I messed that up. That's on me. And why don't you, once you have entered your um, your numbers and checked them over, um, please go ahead and raise your hand on so we can see who's complete.
ね、最初に。あ、あれじゃん Do check and double check and. I think we're good, right? Everyone's raising their hand. Okay. We all believe that we have completed filling it out. So I believe the next、um, task would be for Whitney, his staff, to. Take this and do her magic and to bring it back to us after、um, we go on to another item on the agenda. Terrific. Okay. We can lower our hands. So the file, I just leave it alone. I don't save or do anything to it, I t h i n k I will take it away. <laughs> yeah, I'll close out the permissions at this point so it can't be accessed anymore. And then we'll、um, return to the item and I'll share a little bit more elaborate breakdown of the numbers、um, sure. for you all to view and discuss. Okay. Okay, super. So we're going to close out that part of、um, so item three on the agenda, which is the filling out of the worksheet. And we're going to go back to item one. On the agenda, which is the demonstration of the new online tennis reservation system. And if Commissioner Gumarapan is listening, you are welcome to come back and join us. And if not, we'll pick them up later. <laughs> All right, I just want to、um, introduce Rochelle again.、Um, she's going to provide us、um, an update.、Um, this is a new online tennis reservation system that was implemented and rolled out in January for the Sports Center、um, tennis courts. And so, without further ado,、uh, the master of ActiveNet. Oh, so many titles these days. All right. So, as of January 1st of this year, tennis court reservations for the Cupertino Sports Center members can be made online through the regforrec.org registration site. The registration process begins on the main regforrec.org page by clicking reservations. The reservation button will lead you to the reserve a facility page where members then click tennis courts and picnic site. This leads to the Quick Reserve platform. Under Reservation Group, members choose Cupertino Sports Center Tennis Courts. They input a reservation date and click Check the Availability box. Availability for each tennis court will show for the date chosen. Time, slot, time slots are pre designated based on the Sports Center's 90 minute reservations. Members then select a time slot on the court they want by checking the box associated with that court and time block. They input the number of players in the box titled number of guests and click reserve at the bottom of the page. If a member sees a red check mark instead of a box, that indicates the court is already reserved at that time. Once a member hits reserve, they will see a reservation receipt that they can print. Save as a PDF or email to the address on file for that customer. The process is then complete. The tennis court reservations have been well received by the members and take some of the phone call overload off of staff during the 8 a.m. rush for tennis courts. Staff and members alike are very happy with the new process. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. You're muted, Carol. Thank you. Questions from the Commissioner? Commissioner Tambe. I'll save my compliments for the latter section.、Um, so, is there a limit for?、Um, so, I don't sports.、Um, is there a limit for somebody when they're booking 
um, in terms of how many times they can book or can somebody be like, I'm going to play every day at this time for the rest of eternity? Yeah. So you can only book the tennis court that day once and you can only book at 8 a.m. that day. So the, all of the rules that were standard with the tennis courts when they had to make a phone call are inactive and will carry over to the online reservations. Excellent. Thank you. Any more questions from the commissioners? Okay, let's open up to questions from our public. If anyone would like to ask a question about the reservation system for tennis, please raise your hand now. Okay, no questions on that. Uh, comments? <laughs> Commissioner Tombe. Uh, this is fantastic. This has been kind of in the works and in progress for quite a while. So congrats on getting it out the door. It's so exciting to have like a modern looking seamless system. It's great. So, so congratulations and also really excited for um, community members to have an opportunity to use it too. So like big hat tip and it's fantastic. Any other comments? Discussion? Who's going to be the first to use it from the commission? <laughs> it's not going to be Nisha. <laughs> we can reserve benches instead. You can reserve too. it for somebody else. <laughs> but I agree. Um, you know, this is a great step forward. You know, the more we get automated, um, the easier it is for the residents to use our facilities and our programs. And so, uh, I remember what a great thing that was when. The classes came online, and uh, so now this is just another step forward. So, great work. Okay, Th we're done with that item. So, before we move to um, the next item, actually on the agenda is item number four the Rancho Rinconada discussion. But I'd like to check back in with staff if we could move item five up because I know that a lot of the attendees that we have are um, associated with the community grant funding and I'm sure they would appreciate if um, we could move ahead on that. So and Whitney, are you ready? I think we're good to go. Um, is anything sorting wise that you guys need me to do? I will try my best to facilitate, but I do have all the numbers into the worksheet ready to go. Okay, let's do the unveiling. Um, did you did you want me to share now um, and then open up for public comment after? Um, why don't you share and we can have any questions. And um, Carol, would you mind um, just reintroducing the item number five for the? Okay, sure. Thank you. Item number five is the fiscal year 2021-22 community funding application evaluations and recommendation to city council. This is continued from item number three. Okay, so we have three different tabs. This is the one that you all just completed. And then we also have it... Um, just with a list with the totals, a little more condensed with their amounts requested. Um, and this is sorted currently um, by your average totals. And then we also have this form with the oh. rankings. <laughs> the one thing that seems a little odd to me is this section. Um, this is a sum of each of your rankings. Um, and I, I don't know if that works for you guys or if there was a different oh. way you wanted that formatted, but I, I've, uh, yeah, I've sorted it by that. So on that, a lower score is better. Okay. Yes. It's a higher yeah. ranking. Okay. So if we go. Could you just the, divide by four or whatever? Never mind. That's okay. Well, it's, it's an order. So it's in a rank order. Um, if you go to the all orgs. And uh, so this is right now sorted by scores, correct? Yes, by your averages. Okay. So if we were, um, 
So I, let's not have any discussions. So let's have any questions about that. Um, and then do you also have one that shows it sorted by the ranking? I was just thinking that. Um, I guess so that, should... without all without all the the commission, so we can see the commission ranking next to the organization. Can you just hide all those columns so that we can? Um, um, which ones would you like? The just just I want it all the individual ones hidden, or just put the commission average right next to the applicant so that we can see it I next see. to it. Because by the time you get all the way to the commission or the ranking. Over it's way on the right, and we can't see it next to the uh, yes, that makes sense to the name of the organization. A better right, right. So here you could see that you know a high ranking as the commission averages translates to a top um, ranking. So the, the the average number, a high one is good. Ranking a low number is good, so that's why that um, comes out that way. Are there any questions about this? Is it possible to just copy AJK and put it next to the uh, one on all orgs? Does that matter? To, is to it copy the same what? what I guess you... that's what I'm asking. Is it the same order? Does it end up being the same order? I was wondering, I can paste the order next to the other one. And yeah, see just so, so we can see kind of the up. juxtaposition. Yeah, so it if you should. look at it, um, you could see if, if one number was a little bit higher than the other. So right here, you see 349 is below 348. So I mean, but oh, okay. it, it, in effect, the they're, they're the same. <laughs> but from a ranking perspective, they may be very different. Looks oh like yeah, this, this really things. does change. So roughly the top 11, oh. no. Uh, I, I, I noticed something wrong under my name in my column. Can you show in which tab again? Which which tab? The this one mm. or the all? The this one is where the with my from. name. I think I inputted the the Audubon Society as seventy, but in the, the other page it shows zero under my name. You can check. So and hide those columns. Uh, under my name, yes, uh, zero. Yeah, Mina under Mina. The oh, room yeah. 17 oh. for Autobahn, yeah, yeah. and okay, also so. for the Curie key, the same thing. Uh, the Curie key, yeah, it's zero for all of us for both of those, yeah. Oh, yeah, so something weird's going on there, okay? So it didn't pull over, okay. Um in this case, would you mind um, verbally voicing your Mina? Uh, so my score, that's uh, 70, and the last one is 47. Okay. Thanks. And then Commissioner Begor? Uh, it was 85 for both. Okay. And then Commissioner Tom Day? For Audubon Society, it was 86. And uh, for the Kuriki, it's 57. Okay. So, so I guess what I'd like all the commissioners to do is spot check some of the other ones, because if those last two didn't come over right, maybe yes. um, some of the other ones didn't as well. So I apologize to the people watching. This is a new process for us that was recommended by, I guess, our city clerk's office. And um, we are doing the best we can. <laughs> so we appreciate people hanging in there with us. And uh, commissioners doing yeah. the, the work to check. Someone else. 
me look at my own too. I apologize that they're now in a different order. Well, yeah, because they're sort of in a rank order now. So let's see. That was good eyes there, you know. Now everything looks fine. Yeah, same. Can we check this other yeah. totals? Oh, this one, I believe, would just match up with the other. That should match with this average column rather than your individual numbers. Did that changing um, change the order of the um, organizations that you just added in there? Yes, and then I, I did already sort it again. Oh, and, and did you copy it and paste it back in that other tab? Not yet. Okay. So yeah, this one will now. Great catch, Commissioner Shu. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that does that does change. It's a little things. more on par. Yeah. Okay, does anyone else have any questions before we get to discussion? And before we do that, I would um, see if there are any uh, participants, any public that would like to have any questions about it. So commissioners, no more questions. Okay, then I will go to our attendees and see if anyone has any questions at this time. If you do, please raise your hand. I see one. We'll try this again. Are there any other? <laughs> I'd like to get a sense of how many people have questions. Okay, right now I only see one uh, attendee with their hand up. Orrin Mahoney. Yeah, no, this all, okay, you can hear me good. This all looks good. So in the ranking one, I, I understand the points one. In the ranking one, it looks like there's multiple of the same number. Was it supposed to be like a force ranking one to 18 or, because there's, there's a lot of twos and ones and like the same number for a lot of different things. That just looked a little strange. Well, once, I think. No, for an individual, I'm saying. Oh, for an individual. Yeah, if you look at go back and look at that, it, it looks a little weird. And I, I don't know that it affects the difference much, but. It could be that um, a commissioner gave the same, ended up giving the same score to a couple of different organizations. I oh. know that after I, uh, we went through all the criteria, I noticed that some of my scores were the same for different organizations. So that would give probably the same rank. Okay, so the ranking. Organizations for my list. The ranking was based on the score. Correct. Not separate. Okay, then it's all going to come out in a wash. Great. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Good question, though. I had to think about that. Okay, we have one more person. Raji. And I will promote Raji to a panelist again. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, the question I had was um, in the last. Um, worksheet that you showed us on the 12th row it says Montevista speech boosters but the applicant next to it is a different name so I just I'm confused okay we'll bring it back up and see if we can see what's going on there and, and we appreciate your input on this because this is a new process um, you know we're, uh, the more eyes, the better. One. Whitney, can you bring that up again? Are you able to see my screen or no? No, no, you're not so sharing it. I believe she's referring to the um, 
the slide where we pasted in the rankings oh, okay. next to the totals. So it's just a comparison of how the rankings were versus the commissioner averages. So we're trying to see how those two matched up. Okay. And Hopefully I will, that share my screen. Question. Sorry about that. Okay, we're, that's all the um, questions from the comments from the community. So now let's go back. And so I guess one question is if you were to just take your, um, if you could sum it going down, or at least not sum, just sort of do a total as you went down, how far would $90,000 go? If you just highlight those items, um, are you seeing a, a sum at the bottom? What if you just did a cumulative sum over to the right? Maybe that would be easier. We can see how it adds up. For so if you just go one column to the right, next to amount requested, and in that cell you've got ten thousand, and in the one next below it you've got ten thousand seventy-four hundred. Actually, we uh, how about this, Whitney? Right now you've selected what? Um, okay. So and then if you just added is, what's above yeah. it, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I did that. Um, you have to do it on every one. Yeah. Or just do no, I, the one to the left to the uh, add it to the one right above it. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I, I don't think this one follows the ranking. You, you can check the A and B they doesn't match each other. So the, the amount doesn't match the correct ranking. Um, so you, you, you can see the... Uh, the one in orange, if I... Yeah, the the row 10, the ranking uh, 9 should be Tianhong, but the, the amount is a Rotary Club. That's not 3,000. So the row 9, that's... Right, so, so we'll need to do that, that kind of comparison um, where we got the amounts next to the actual, um, like on, on the, or the next one. So let's just start with this um, list right now. I'm not sure if there's a more efficient no, function uh, with this. See, uh, Whitney, can you do this in column D? If you go to the top, select like D2, down to say D, uh, let's say to 10, and just put that as the sum at the bottom. Let's see how much that is. And then if 10 doesn't come to 90,000, we can add 11 to it. So well, just go down she to was, the bottom. She's doing the cumulative uh, sum as, on the right. So we can see D. that. Yeah, but... Chair, can I add a little bit of clarification? Because I think there was a question from the audience about this. Sure. Um, so, and also clarification for myself. So the orange list, so under column B, it has the organizations in orange um, and then the commission total. So this list is based off of a sum uh, of uh, the average of all of the scores. So this, is, this list in column B is based off of the average of scores. Uh, we also want to look at the uh, the rankings um, because sometimes, you know, I really didn't go below 50 and some people went below 50. So my scores can skew another person's yeah. scores. So in addition to looking at the total, uh, the average that each organization got, which is in orange, we're also looking at the ranking that each of these organizations received, which is what you see in yellow. So it's not saying that 
the rankings are what's in orange. The rankings are what's in yellow based off of how we had ra individually ranked them. And in column B, that is the list according to the average of the scores, um, because average doesn't always mean it isn't always equivalent to ranking. So that's I, there was yes. a question about that. Yes, I agree 100 percent. There are some people who are hard graders and there are some people who are easy graders and um, on e and some people grade hard and easy and have a big gap in between and that can really skew. So the rankings are very important to be looking at that. And that was um, something that I talked about with staff. So that's why we, we do have that available. So um, yeah, I think maybe, I, I'm thinking column A might be confusing things a little bit right here, right now. But I think we want to- like Hide or you want it there for comparison at the moment? You can hide it for now. And then um, I think I, I'd like to go to the other tab and do sort of the same thing that you did in terms of um, based on the rankings, where do we end up with dollars? This sheet does not have dollars assigned to it. Okay. Um, so Might I make a suggestion? Sure. <laughs> um, so maybe we can leave this um, form up for you to start your discussion. And then Whitney, you can copy the um, pricing and do um, the same thing on the yellow form uh, for the rankings form while they're, while, they're while they're looking at this one. Is that possible? They're on the same screen. So I technically would oh, yeah. not be able to okay. do both at the same time, but I... Um, well, I think if we help you, if you get to the other screen, then we could um, call out for you. So you're not having to look at it. Or you could just add a column. Can, if you go right. back to all orgs and add a column. You right, add a column. And, and in the order that you have it there, um, no, in the other tab. Sorry, you're getting all sorts of direction. Say uncle if it's too much coming at you at once. <laughs> Um, why don't you go ahead and hide all the individual, all of our names? Yeah, because what we want. Okay. Okay, and just give us a column for um, the request amount. And if you want to call out. And then we can uh, figure out the amount. Okay. West Valley. 10,000. Uh, Cupertino Library Foundation. Library Foundation, 15,000. I hope somebody's checking me on these two. We got you. CG Medical Foundation. Yeah, we are Medical old. <laughs> uh, 7,400. 7,400. Let me confirm that. Yes. Uh, Santa Clara Valley Audubon. Audubon is their way down here. 8,500. Friends of Deer, Deer Hollow Farm is 7,000. Chinese American Coalition for Compassionate Care is 12,000. Valkyrie Robotics is 3,000. Um, Tian Hong Foundation is 3,000. Rotary Club of Cupertino is 12,000. Euphrat Museum of Art is 15,000. Monta Vista High School Speech Boosters Club is $13,024. Um, Apolly is $20,000. Galashi Foundation is $9,999. Silicon Valley Jewish Film Festival is $10,000. Discovery Counseling Center of Cupertino is $7,200, The Wani Academy of Percussion Music in the United States is $9,100. And Kariki is $20,000.
could you sum total that just to make sure the total is is um, the, the the same as what we've had before in terms of requested? To make sure we got it all in there correct. Does that look right? Two, 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 three. Two, two, three. Looks good. Great. So yeah, if you could do the same thing you did with the other, that would be good. Auto populates. Um, there's oh, sorry, uh, if just sorry, just making your life easier, there is a little dot at the end of that thing of that uh, uh, block that you're looking at. If you just drag it down, it'll copy the it should copy it at least right. No, 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 no. no they're not all the same. The okay, they're not all the same. So, okay, I mean, if she just added the one right above it and the one to the left, and she could copy it down because it's accumulative. I'm going to keep going up my... Uh, I have, while, while Whitney's working on this chair, I have a question. Sure. Um, when we continue, is it possible for us to do a, a one round of just bottoms up elimination? Because based off of the sum total, as well as the ranking, the bottom four are the same. Um, so that might just, you know, help us with... Uh, with what we're looking at, of which two we had previously stated were likely not oh, the, eligible anyways. The, the row six, the sum has some problem. Row six and row five, the same. Yeah, uh, let's see. And that looks okay. 62, 65 looks good, 77, okay, then you're there. So if we're looking, um, so the ones that we said we thought were not eligible were um, Silicon Valley Jewish Film Festival, and what was the other, the Kariki. So the one on row 15 and row 17. So those two, you know, I could see us, in fact, is that correct that those were the two? I thought it was Silicon Valley Jewish Film Festival and the Dewani Academy of Profession and Music. Yeah. Was, oh, okay, sorry, yes, that's why I asked. Okay. I'm comfortable sticking with the commission's uh, previous determination at the version A of this round where we said that they were not eligible for that particular reason. Well, can we, can we compare like the top 10? Is there, is there a difference? One, two, three, four. Like if we look at the first five, um, West Valley Library, Medical Foundation, Audubon, Friends of Deer Hollow. Are those consistent between the two? Maybe now would be a. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's possible, Whitney, for you to copy and paste um, one chart under the other so that they can look at them on the same page. Oh. And they can compare and contrast on the same page instead of going back and forth through tabs. Sorry. There we go. Maybe scrolling up and down might be easier. Uh, oh, dear. But at least we have the names. Um, you have to paste uh, values. Or can can hide cells. Whitney, you're a champ. I should have to do this real time. I and mean, this is like having class. having <laughs> ten supervisors looking over your shoulder while you're doing a spreadsheet and the public. So just uh, 
so everyone <laughs> appreciates what she's doing here. I'm hoping, did that delete everything? Yeah, it did. I had a feeling it was going to happen. Uh oh. Don't lose it all. I won't. Sorry, my computer's thinking it's a little frozen. So I can't. Oh. Got overloaded. <laughs> can, I well, I see you. <laughs> can I bring up a conversation point that's unrelated to rankings and scores? Is it there? It removed what we had for that's the quizzes. Right. And now you, it won't let me undo. You hit, it won't let you undo? <laughs> no. It saved me now. Oh, that's a problem with doing it on that. But do you have, you at least have the names, right? You have the names in the order that we wanted them. Yes, yeah, so I have, yeah. You have the names in both sorts. Let me and show you, you what, let me share again, I'm sorry. This is, so I have this form, this one, we lost the information that we had. Okay, but we do we have do, the names. What if you put the names next to each other like you had it? I mean, so we're not looking at numbers. But so we know which one was, that one was for the raw scores, and this is based on the rankings, which I think. Um, okay, so, so we're just looking at the names here and sort of seeing what's in the top five. When we look at the top five, West Valley is in both, the Buddhist Sioux is in both, the Cupertino Library, Santa Clara, Ottawa. So the first five are the same, first six, first seven. So a lot of consistency there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So through row eight. The row and then on eight. row nine and 10, those two were just flipped. So a lot of consistency, and then you frack. So if we look at um, where do we, is, is there any discussion about those items? And if can we see over to the right? Oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's, I can't see it because I'm seeing our people here. But if I move that, um, so, $92,000 gets us down to uh, row 11, which is the Euphrat Museum of Art. And the request is to be between 70 and 90,000, and there just happens to be a big gap um, between that. Is there, are you still contemplating? Oh, Commissioner Tombe. So I guess I'm, I, my instinct is to do reverse. So the first four are, I would be comfortable um, not funding at this time because across the board, it seems like that was towards the end. Um, and two of the ones that we had said were ineligible or we were considering to be ineligible are in the bottom four. Um, and then up until column 10, um, I'm comfortable with the order that we have it, which leaves us, uh, you know, about twelve hundred dollars of wiggle room. Um, but row ten, that, yeah, row ten, because they're all the two through ten on both sides are the same. They're just in different orders, right? And not very far off. Does anyone else have any comment on that? My only comment is that um, there's only one in that order that's new, right? I believe that only... The Library Foundation is new. Valkyrie Robotics is new. No, oh, I guess in my head, Library Foundation is... Tian Hung is new. Okay, so we have three out of the nine. So oh, the Buddhist the Medical Foundation is new. Oh. So we have one, two, 
two, one, two, three, three four. four. Four are new. So that's about half. So we're we're still accomplishing getting, you know, the new blood in there, which is good. Yeah, I think that's uh are we wanting okay. to completely fund each of these at the requested amount? The issue was that we ran into, or I think the suggestion from a couple years ago was that the organizations asked for what they asked for, for a reason. And there was just so much variability that we could start getting into to, to say, let's cut these dollars here, or those dollars here. It would be a very difficult conversation. And um, I guess, you know, again, the city council can uh, make some de their own determination on that as well as they did last year. <laughs> Vice Chair Shu? Uh, yeah, uh, I agree that, that we gave them fully funded uh, the first uh, first uh, mm, from West Valley to Pierre, that, that's the the amount is uh seventy seven nine hundred. Yeah, so gives them four funding. Yeah, I agree with that because uh, look at the rank ranking and the average score. Yeah, uh, that matches uh, very well, and almost half are new applicants. Uh, that's just my comment. Commissioner Tambe? So the only other th uh, thing to factor in, um, in my opinion, is uh, one of the things we also look for is making sure we're including, um, I actually think it's fine to split split requested amounts because a lot of times people ask for more than what they think they're going to get. That's like the norm in nonprofit. Um, but uh, also to look at um, what diversity wise, what we're focusing our funding on, maybe not for this cycle, but for a future cycle to pay attention to um, if there's any kind of you know demographic that we're consistently funding over another. Um, this follows very similar to mine, my outline but uh, my per my personal scores but um, yeah I'm pretty comfortable with, with funding the top set um, I yeah that's it so um, so really we're not funding we are recommending to council to be funding so um, I guess that, are we ready for a motion of what we would want to recommend to council? And um, to read. Oh, wait, I was just going to make a motion. So, Commissioner. Should we um, make a note of some kind which besides the Jewish Film Festival and the, the one? The percussion music? It, yes. And we can put that in the motion. I would like that to be on a separate list so there's no confusion. We're not significantly changing any orders here. Yeah, just pulling it out of the lineup. Sorry, I think I was muted. Uh, will it work to, to do an eligibility column or is there a different way that you guys would like to facilitate that? I was be thinking if you could rank those two at the bottom, because if they are ineligible, it makes no sense for them to be on the list. Yeah. However, yeah. 
um, you know, if the city council decides that they want to fund those too, it's up to them. But we will say, hey, you know, time was spent. I mean, why time was spent saying, okay, yeah. this, this, these yeah. two fell out completely. Given the complexity of the spreadsheet, why don't we go ahead and, and give our recommendation and then Whitney can create the what she's gonna what we want her to present to council so she doesn't have to be manipulating the spreadsheet right now. Next to Silicon Valley Jewish Film Festival and the other one, the Dwani. Uh, just in brackets, just say ineligible. So that it's, you know, you look at the list, you don't have to look at anything else um, on both the A and the B columns. So it's very, very clear these two have been pulled out. Is that what you guys would like me to do? Put it yeah. in brackets, just say ineligible. Yeah, that's all. Then it's very clear. And then the copy that same thing over to both the column B. Does that work? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's in your face, so. Yeah, and I think, you know, if it, when it gets to be presented to council, you would want, you wouldn't want just these two lists of names um, next to each other. What we're really doing is we were ranking based on the, or we're recommending based on the ranking, but we'd probably want to go ahead and let them know this other information um, and what the scores were on that, but show them that this was the primary tab or the you know primary consideration, just so they don't get confused. Yeah, we can definitely provide a document that has the that has everything that's all encompassing. Yeah. Was what we had here with each of your individual rankings, even if you want that on a separate sheet versus one that's a little cleaner that has your averages for totals and rankings and then the funding amount associated. Yeah, I think the uh, the commission ranking is the one that, you know, because of the issues with averaging um, that Commissioner Tombe talked about, this is the one that is, is more useful. But the other one is good information as well. Okay, are we ready for a motion? We can always have amendments to the motion. Commissioner Tombe? Yeah, um, should I be going up to row 11 or row 10? Make your motion. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I move to recommend to council funding what on this spreadsheet is currently rows 2 through 11. So that includes so the total Euphrat at Museum of Art. Yeah, that includes Euphrat Museum at $92,900. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Friendly amendments? I think in any case, we want to present all the information to council so it won't be like last year that they didn't have the information and they just went and made a different decision. I think if we provide all the information to them, they will be in a better position to, um, to make their decision. I did want decision. to pull, I did want to highlight one thing. Um, so I, uh, was a Monta Vista High School student. I actually, like my senior year, placed third nationally in a speech competition. Um, that having been said, um, I, for the future, it's not an eligibility cr criteria right now, um, but it is a slippery slope. It's a, a booster organization can be spun up for any uh, program at any high school. And if we make a precedent to um, fund one, um, we'll basically, it would be, 
odd to not follow that same protocol for mirrored organizations at different high schools, different middle schools, different elementary schools as these different booster organizations um, spin up. So I don't know if that makes a you know difference to how like my motion because my motion is very straightforward, but um, also something for us to consider. I think we will have an opportunity to revisit the um, program and the process and to clarify some things. Uh, I, I did have some concerns about uh, opening it up to booster clubs uh, because there are so many of them. So I, I share that and I think that's a discussion for another time. Right now they were eligible and so, and they got ranked the way they got ranked. So, um, do we, we have a, a motion and a second and we're done with discussion. Can we call a vote? Commissioner Bigor. Can you say it? <laughs> yes, can you hear me? No, I do. Yeah, okay. Well, I was saying and I was on mute, so I wasn't sure when I got to it. Commissioner Tom Bay. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Kumar, sorry, Commissioner Kumar Pan has used himself. Um, Vice Chair Shu. Yes. And Chair Stanek. Yes. Motion carries. And then just to clarify really quick, sorry about this. Um, no, please. You wanted to also make sh clear in the motion the ineligibility of the two organizations? Yes. So that will be reflected. Okay, just, just confirming. Yes, and we want to be sure that the full rankings are presented to council. Correct. So do you think it will be appropriate, um, kind of the three tabs that we had had originally in their format, providing those with the average totals the rankings and then all of your numbers for each um, sorted into the tiers. Um, or we can we can also look at your motion and and organize it as we see fit, um, knowing what your intention is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you could you could break it out in tiers because that's the way the. Um, the policy is written I mean, just to make sure somehow council needs to be a, uh, need, need to be able to identify the tiers. I think it wouldn't hurt um, to be able to provide um, the rankings and the averages, the forms that we have here as additional attachments to the item for the reference. Agreed. Yeah. The more information, the better. Can I just say something before we move on to the next item? Yes, please. I just wanna say thank you so much to the commissioners and to staff for working through this new process. I think it actually didn't go as difficult as I had anticipated. <laughs> so I really appreciate everybody's good naturedness um, and their efforts and their collaboration. So thank you for your patience and great job to all of you to work through this with us. So thank you. We will continue to improve. <laughs> Yes, and I'd like to thank all of the applicants. Um, there were some applicants that I would have really liked to see funded, but um, we can't fund everything. And some of them, that you know, many of them are, are very worthy, but they may or may not just fit with this program. And so um, based on the criteria that we had, we, um, we ranked them. And so I wanna thank everyone for their applications and Hopefully next year will, this upcoming year will be easier to implement the grants that are being provided and we can really do the things that we want to um, see happen in our community. So thank you all for applying and congratulations to those who will be receiving. Well, once council gets to it, <laughs> who knows? Okay, so we're done with uh, item number five. No, item number four. So I don't know, that was item number five. Sorry for the confusion. We will now move to item number four, the uh, 
commission initiated discussion regarding Rancho Rinconada Recreation and Park District's community outreach. And welcome back, Commissioner Kumarapan. <laughs> Good to see you back. Thank you. So on this item, um, this was proposed by the commission to have a discussion, a new discussion on this item. And um, so I was wondering if uh, any of the commissioners were able to attend the outreach that um, the Rancho Rinconada Parks District had regarding the future of Rancho Rinconada and if you could provide any update. Uh, I know Commissioner Shu said she wasn't available, able to attend. Commissioner Shu, would you like to address that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, originally, I planned to uh, attend that meeting, but it turned out my company has a meeting uh, at the same time, so I didn't make it. But I did have some uh, information to share here. Uh, I sent email uh, asking, ask some question uh, to the, send email to the board of Rancho Rikonada and their director. Uh, so uh, the first question is about, uh, because in their mailer to the Rancho Rikonada residents, they, they mentioned uh, if the Cupertino City take control of this pool, uh, there may be a price increase. So I asked them uh, about the data source and based on what kind of uh, fact they drew this conclusion. Uh, and I got a reply from the director uh, and he, he said mm, he used the word may, that's only show a possibility. Uh, so they don't think it's a conclusion on their side. Yeah, so that, that's his opinion. Uh, and uh, on their website, I noticed uh, there's an online survey uh, was put there this week because I, I keep checking their website. Uh, in the past, I saw only in the email subscription link, but when you click, uh, it returns something, the, the error page. But now the subscription link can work and there's also an online survey. So I asked them uh, when is the deadline and the, the beginning date and the deadline of the survey. And they said um, it's from uh, just from last weekend and it will end uh, in April, in April 12th. Yeah. So that's almost uh, three weeks to finish the online survey. And, and I also noticed that uh, there's some newly updated uh, FAQ on the website. And on their website, they also mentioned if Cupertino City take, uh, acquires the pool, there may be some program fee increase. Uh, and they said uh, it's because uh, the city of Cupertino, they may make some upgrades uh, to the facilities, so that will cause the fee increase. Yeah, so the, I, that's the information I want to share. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I know that on their website, they also said that uh, video of those two meetings was supposed to be um, made available, and um, I think staff was checking on that. Last I checked, I did not see, it was not yet available. Um, so I think that will be helpful for us to understand um, how the outreach is going. Uh, so are there any questions right now? And then I'll open it up to questions from our, our attendees. Commissioner Kumarapan. Yeah, sorry, maybe I didn't check those, um, the survey. So is that the survey? The question is mainly, is it the survey for Rancho Reconado, the residents, or the, the survey is open to anyone? I haven't checked the survey. I don't know that, so I'm just. Uh, I think it's open to everyone. 
Yeah, I didn't see any restriction. Okay, that's all. I haven't checked it, so thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions, we will open this up to public comment. And we have one person, Jennifer Griffin. Jennifer. Uh, thank you, um, Chair Stanek. I'm Jennifer Griffin, and um, I'm uh, pleased to be here this evening. Um, I did attend both workshops. That was last week. It was Thursday and Friday. Um, I also attended the workshop that the board attended with the uh, facilitator who was retained by the district. And I will say that it was everything was conducted in a very professional manner. Um, I worked in IT for many years at a major engineering company, and I have attended many of these types of booster workshops, um, et cetera. And I, in my opinion, the presenter did an excellent presentation. I was very, very impressed. The workshops were very well attended, especially the two by the public, and there was very, very professional done. And believe me, I worked at an engineering company in doing Unix system administration for IT for over 15 years in private industry. This was a class act presentation. Um, the, I have already done the survey. It was um, it, in the workshop, they completely addressed the um, survey and when it will be up. Um, I am very pleased as a resident of Rancho that everything is being done professionally on our end as a resident. And that's why I took the time. Last Wednesday, I think is when you all had your meeting, I had three simultaneous Zoom meetings. One of them was the workshop, and I chose to give up a very critical workshop that I was also attending to go the mile to go with the Rancho workshop because I am that concerned about it. Um, I think that we need to make sure that people understand, and my, my husband helped me with this wording because he was here during the last meeting that I attended with you all, um, that this is a very highly sensitive situation for the neighborhood of Rancho Rinconada. And I know we have so many people that live in the neighborhood. This is a ongoing process. Um, it is highly emotional. And we need to be sensitive to the fact that this is a highly sensitive project for the neighborhood. And I will say right now, we are doing everything on our end to make sure that this is going to be a collaborative open process. Yes, and I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I don't get more time on this because this is yes, I am bit I don't think that we I'm not I have not been convinced that the city is treating this, they're treating it like a joke, basically. I think we're I spend my time working on this and I hope the city is doing due diligence on this. Um, thank you. Thank you. I think a lot of people are trying very hard. Okay. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Um, three minutes is up. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. I'll bring it back to the commission for discussion. Um, Commissioner Tombe. So um, the reason that I wanted this to be put back onto uh, the commission's agenda is because we, it was brought, the flyer was brought to my attention at the last meeting. Um, and so I, we couldn't discuss it um, without having an agendized item. So that's why it's back on our agenda, just in case folks in, in who are in the audience are wondering. Um, I am curious um, if we know, uh, so I, 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 it was my understanding that um, any improvement is great improvement. It's great to see that the board has decided now to take uh, these steps and has commissioned uh, a consultant to help kind of do outreach uh, to the community, um, to build their own programming and to really like make sure that they're serving more Rancho Rinconada residents since only 10% of the users are actually 
from the area. So there's a so that's really great to see that they're making those strides. Um, do we know uh, from a financial perspective uh, since the or, since that district is being funded by in portion by the people in the Rancho Rinconada area? Um, is the flyer that was sent out also sent out using those same community taxpayer funds? Do we know that? I don't think we know that. Okay. There's, I don't think there's anyone here who can answer that. We'd have to ask the district. Um, do you have any other comments? Not at the moment, but it's me, so I probably okay. will come back with one. Commissioner Kumarapan. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is related to the same survey. Um, is this survey as a similar survey questions, uh, what city put together or is it something different? Uh, maybe I'll like to know. Again, I don't have the survey link. I'll go and search after the meeting. But, and I'm trying to see, that's one. And how do, how does this going to, is it going to be given back to the city? And I'm, I'm, what is the purpose of the survey? Uh, other one is that it says that uh, the city will increase the fee. And that means, is there any indication city has already given to the board that by improving it uh, or the facility improvement, whatnot, the program will be, will increase. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out where this information has been given from cities. The city staff, as part of the discussion, they put together officially, they are given that, yes, this is going to increase the program fee or an indication on it. I'm trying to figure it out. And I think I would like to get that answer too. I'm not sure who can give that answer. So two, one is that how that survey is going to match the questions with what the city has already sent the survey earlier sometime back. Is it is exact match or completely different? Number two, is the city had any discussion with the board that there is a proposal to increase the fee? So I, those two, I have it on the table. Sure, I'll do my best, um, Gopal, to answer your questions. So um, I think that a lot of the information that is being um, hold, it, my understanding is from the LAFCO special study. I, I, we don't control the district and we don't control how they do their survey, how they conduct their outreach or anything that they're stating. Um, and so they're moving through their process. Um, okay. I am also unaware of what their survey entails. I have not had an opportunity to look at that. So I can't really give you any feedback on what questions they're asking or how it lines up with the survey um, and the questions that um, the commission put together um, and distributed. And for the second one, also, Dr. Jovan, can you, because as a city staff, uh, based on the initial discussions or assessment, uh, is there any indication or anything is given that, that uh, the program fees will go up from the city to the board? Because if it is stated in the flyer and it's stated in the FAQ, I wanted to make sure that if it is the information given, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if a community member, if I see it, yeah, I don't want to pay too much on additionally. Why would city increase mine? And is there any indication as given from city that the program VP will go up? Specifically related to that facility, no. I think that some of the um, information that was presented at the study session indicated that our fees are, are positioned differently um, at Blackberry Farm. And currently those are uh, different in price and higher in price than what Rancho ch charges for similarly um, nice. programs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, those two, because I don't know the information, so thanks. Thank you, Director. Uh, Vice Chair Shu, did you want to make a comment? Your hand was up, and now it's down. I'm checking more information, and I, I will uh, talk about it later. Okay, um, so I think you know right now. Oh, Commissioner Tambe, is that? Oh, I just uh, I just wanted to um, uh, I like thank um, Director McGreeny for uh, clarifying that we don't have like it's not a city thing right now. What's coming from the Parks District? That's coming from their board, so that's not a city communicated information. Um, 
So th thanks for clarifying that. I actually was confused about that too. So thank you for that clarification. Okay, so I guess I just wanted to um, circle back to where we are on this. Um, so it was presented to council and council made a decision to um, not make a decision right now to put it off for a while and see how things develop and um, and consider it in the future. And that's so it's it's still out there. Um, but I don't believe there's any work item associated with it right now. Um, as a commission, we did have a, a subcommittee that that was assigned to this, and that was Vice Chair Shu and Commissioner Begor. I think it may be, but I don't think there's a lot, not much has been happening with that just um, since we've been doing our work. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe we should have um, the subcommittee and, you know, if we'd like to change the subcommittee, that would be good. I'd be happy to, to serve on that um, as well um, to, to just follow and bring periodic updates back to the commission um, based on the outreach and any developments that um, we think are relevant to moving forward on this. Uh, Commissioner Kumarapan. Yeah, just my recommendation is that since it is already handed over to council and uh, um, it's in that their control since we have did the subcommittee was formed and we did whatever the analysis and we put the recommendation or whatever it is a city and the city council it is under council hands my recommendation would be any updates of this follow-up on the on this uh, could be good to hear from the uh, city staff because i'm sure the council will ask the city staff hey what's going on or what it is but I'm not sure whether forming another subcommittee, reforming the subcommittee and doing more research and feeding in. Uh, that means for our own updates, yes, it may be good. Um, if not, I'm not sure whether there is a process that we will form and give the pro in input back to council. I don't think that there is any action from the council for us to follow up. So that's the only thing. Is it is it really needed that we need to form a committee and go and do this? Rather individually, like any one of the commissioners can provide updates or the city staff can provide updates. That that would be my question on the need for the subcommittee and do further analysis. Just that's my thought. And I think uh, the team you can decide, we can decide, but that's my thought. Uh, Commissioner Tambe. I really appreciate the um, efforts to streamline. Um, I think that that's awesome. Um, that having been said, I am I think that this is a really um, sensitive subject and I think it's really important for us as, I mean, I'm not a swimmer. I don't live on the east side of, of Cupertino. I don't live in that area, but I am very you know, conscious of the folks who do live there and who are paying taxes and what the service level looks like for those community members. It is a very sensitive topic. So I would, um, you know, and I would still encourage the idea of having a subcommittee and when the subcommittee feels it's necessary to bring it to the commission, they can, but otherwise we're, we, we can't talk about it if it's just in an update. Um, so I would, I would still be in favor of having a subcommittee, which is, you know, two people. Uh, Commissioner Begor. Uh, having, um, I, I would, uh, you know, having been on that committee and trying to get the information out of that district, um, I would suggest we go with the route that uh, Commissioner Kumarpin has suggested, which is, you know, let's leave it at the city at this point. If it needs, if it needs, if they need some direction from us, I'm sure they will come back and ask us to go back and research it. Um, uh, I think we should leave it at this point. Commissioner, Vice Chair Shu. Uh, I'm thinking at current stage, maybe just as she suggested, but uh, I think things may go to the next stage. Um, so the, that means the Rancho Reconada uh, office, they got the uh, community outreach result. And our council already mentioned they want to wait for the result, maybe use it as a reference. So 
maybe at that stage, we can think about for uh, subcommittee to do more investigation on this topic. But uh, currently, maybe we just wait for a while. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Okay, so I mean, what I was thinking is that there, there are some things that are going on that I think it would be nice to have um, an, a presence so that we are the commission is kept up to date on uh, what's on the outcome of the outreach and you know to the extent that they do post the um, the outreach meetings and just to have a relationship to um, to be with them and and go through it and um, I think city staff since it's not part of the city right now. Um, city staff is not directed to be working on it. And so I think it would be good for us as a commission to at least be aware and to the extent that we can provide updates to the council, um, I would think they would appreciate that. So if I could just clarify one quick thing for you all. Can you hear me? Am I echoing? Yes, no. Okay. You're fine. Um, you know, our intention is to collect and document any pertinent information um, regarding this item and to bring it to city council um, once the visioning process is complete. So, um, you know, we are following the information, um, maybe not as quickly as um, everyone maybe hopes, but we are staying on top of the information um, and collecting it um, to, to update council as well as um, the commission. So, just wanted to let you know that's our intention. Okay, Commissioner Tabe. Yeah, that'd be great if we could get um, updates from from you. I still think that we need, you know, it, it's good for us to have our ear to the ground. Commissioner Zhu was the only reason I knew about the the flyer, so um, I, I really do want to make sure that we stay close to this. And you know, hopefully there won't be much of a need for conversation in the future, but. Um, we don't know that until everything, you know, the results come in and we see kind of that change from 10% to hopefully 90%. Um, but I, I would like to get a little bit more um, clarity, just given the fact that the folks who live in the area are Cupertino um, residents. And I just want to make sure that we're uh, supporting our residents as well. And so if I could get an answer on my question about um, use of funds um, that specifically for the mailer, was it uh, Cupertino, to, uh, like the redirected taxpayer dollars that were used for mailing that flyer, or if it was uh, some kind of independent expenditure um, that was unrelated to that. Um, so I, I just, I don't know that. So that's, that's would be great to get that question answered. So we would have to reach out to the board to determine that information. Uh, Vice Chair Shu. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, Director Joanne's uh, input. Uh, I really appreciate what our city staff uh, did uh, from regarding the Rancho Reconada pool. And I just uh, have a question. Uh, since uh, the Rancho Reconada website they already provide uh, an FAQ list and with some uh, question, I think really concerned by residents and they just provide some short answer which looks uh, clear and uh, I'm wondering if on our city website could um, city staff provide something like uh, like the similar uh, FAQ so yes. people may yeah otherwise they only heard one side story maybe staff is working on updating that research. webpage yes yes staff is working on updating that web page currently so it's taking a little time, but yes, we are working on that. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. We're working on it for sure. Thank you very much. Okay, is there any other discussion or is there a motion for any action? I don't see any. Can Vice I just, can, your can hand I just is mention up, one more thing? Oh, I apologize. But I think her hand was up from before. We never lowered your hand. Okay, I got it. Okay, director. So I just want to let you know this item will come back to you for a recommendation prior to going to council. Just to, to let you know the process. Um, once we do receive the information, 
um, that we are looking to receive from the strategic visioning process. Um, we will bring that information to you for your recommendation to bring back to council. So just wanted to let you know that step is also um, will be included. Okay, before we leave this, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, we did have someone from the public who had raised their hand, but um, public discussion is complete. So um, we will, if there's no other discussion on the commission, we will close this item for today. Okay, let's move on. Yay, new business, staff and commission reports. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. <laughs> I'm gonna share my director's update for you here. Um, I think I did something wrong, let me start over. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties on a Thursday night. Okay, here we go. Is that working? Yes. Okay, great. Fantastic. Okay, so the county continues to offer free COVID testing at the Cupertino Senior Center with the upcoming appointments on April 7th and 21st from 9.30 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. A reminder that even if you have been vaccinated, getting tested is still important for the community's general health. For more information, um, you can visit the Santa Clara, web Santa Clara County website at sccfreetest.org. And for vaccination information, starting today, April 1st, individuals ages 50 or older are eligible to make an appointment. And starting April 15th, individuals ages 16 and older will be eligible to make an appointment. For more vaccination information, you can visit the Santa Clara County website at sccfreevax.org. The county has entered the orange tier as of Wednesday, March 24th. Under this tier, the county uh, continues to align with the state's guidelines. Significant changes include that games between two teams is allowed, but groups must have parents sign an informed consent form regarding the risk of participation. Weekly testing is no longer required for soccer. And now indoor activities are limited to 25% of maximum capacity. Museums can open at 50% capacity. Indoor and outdoor gatherings are still limited to three households. The restrictions have not changed for playgrounds, picnic areas, or outdoor activities from the red tier. So here are our current participation numbers from March of 2021. Um, again, the Sports Center and Blackberry Farm Golf Course continue to be super popular along with our virtual classes, fee-based classes, and the camps um, classes and lessons offered by Lifetown. I think some of you are already aware, but we're happy to announce the promotion of Rochelle Sander as the new assistant director for the department. Um, Rochelle is a Cupertino native and has been working for the city for 16 years. She started as a rec coordinator and later was promoted to recreation supervisor where she has served for six years. Rochelle's experience, as well as her dedication to her work and community, will surely be an asset as she transitions to this new role. So welcome. The City Council will be hosting a special meeting to review the city work program items for next fiscal year on April 12th. Um, and fee schedule changes and updates will be taken to the City Council for review and approval at the regular meeting on April 20th. Uh, restrooms near the playground next to Anton Way in Memorial Park will be closed for renovations beginning on Monday, April 5th. This work is estimated to take three weeks. Um, porta potties and hand washing stations will be available during the closure. Cupertino Parks and Recreation hosted a scavenger egg hunt from March 22nd to 26th, posting a daily clue on its Facebook page for eggs hidden at five different um, park locations throughout the city. Participants were encouraged to visit the park, find the egg, and submit an entry to join in a raffle for a festive basket consisting of an egg hunt kit, uh, egg dye kit, bunny ears, and more. A total of 220 entries were submitted um, and raffle prizes will be distributed tomorrow. Um, super proud of the staff for putting this together and getting people out to our um, less known parks, I'll say. Um, uh, hashtag Cupertino Cares continues to take pledges from residents to keep our community safe and healthy by wearing masks, physically distancing, washing hands, and avoiding gatherings. 
As of March 31st, a total of 422 have pledged to this commitment. All pledges taken before March 31st uh, were entered into a raffle to win a free family care package from the city. The winners will be notified on Tuesday, April the 6th. Recruitment for the Cupertino Teen Commission is now op open. Current 7th through 10th grade Cupertino residents can apply online and interested teens can find the application along with more information at cupertino.org slash teen commission. Applications are due by 4.30 p.m. on Friday, May 7th, and interviews are scheduled for Monday, May 24th. The Cupertino Youth Activity Board is partnering with the Counseling and Support Services for Youth, also known as CASI Nonprofit, to bring a new Infotino webinar series focused on mental health for both students and parents. A teen session is scheduled for April 12th at 5 p.m. with an interactive presentation to provide students important coping skills to use during periods of high stress and anxiety. The parent session is scheduled for April 13th at 6.30 p.m. to address the stigma around surrounding men uh, mental health and empower in attendees with knowledge on supporting student students during their struggles. As an, inter as an incentive, wow, as an incentive, students who register and attend the Monday session will automatically be entered into a raffle to win a $20 milk tea gift card. The city is launching eSports leagues in Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Fortnite, and Rocket League for all South Bay participants ages 13 to 17. For only $10, players gain access to five weekly league matches and qualifying participants will be entered into the league playoffs to compete for a $10 gift card waived res registration fee for the next season, and citywide recognition at the region's first esports champions. Register today at reg for rec or visit cupertino.org slash esports for more information. Just wanted, uh, was a special request that we um, also uh, allow the public to realize where they can access some of this information that we go over at our staff meet or at our commission meetings. So attached are the links to the budget, CIP dashboard, and the city work program dashboard. Um, to get to the city's budget from the main website, go to our city tab and then the finance tab and select budget and reports on the left-hand side. To navigate to the CIP dashboard, you can select public works from our city tab, then select city construction projects um, in, on the left-hand side. And um, for the city work program dashboard, select city council from the city tab and then um, city work program on the left hand side. And that is my update for this evening. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner reports. Commissioner Vigora. Yes, I just realized my hand was up, so I tried to lower it, but I do have the report from that. <laughs> I don't have any questions, but we can uh, we. Are we discussing or are we talking about commissioner reports at this point? Um, so the direct, do, of the yeah, director. Okay, let's see if we have questions for the director and then we'll go on to commissioner reports. Commissioner Tombe? Uh, yeah, um, thank you for the update. I was wondering if you knew if, uh, so for the Santa Clara County vaccine rollout, um, is there any alternative way for somebody to sign up that isn't on the website? And if not, um, have we done any outreach with our senior center and our um, case, uh, our case uh, workers so that we can make sure we're targeting communities who might not have access to a computer or might just not be technology savvy? Yeah, happy to answer that question. So we do get random phone calls um, to the senior center asking for assistance um, to sign up for either COVID testing or vaccination. And so we're happy to facilitate that and staff have been doing that. Um, and then we are also conducting wellness calls on a weekly basis and then member check-ins. And so we're inquiring, and those are usually for our members that don't have email access. Um, so we are um, conducting that, but we're happy to help anyone who also phones in. Okay, great. Is there any kind of um, like newsletter or something physical that people that we can just make sure that specifically getting the vaccine um, 
is on or because I know we've done so many of these kinds of programs. I just want to make sure that the most vulnerable folks can get it. Yeah, absolutely. So we are um, advertising the vaccination information in our 50 plus scene, um, which is the newsletter for the seniors uh, specifically, especially since they were the first group that were eligible. Um, and so we are considering um, mailing that as well, um, starting, um, I think, this month, um, putting it in the mail and getting it to people that, again, don't have email access because those are the people that might not be able to sign up online. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Okay, Commissioner Kumarapan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, I think, yeah, welcome aboard Rachel Sander again, and um, hopefully I can see her, but sometime uh, she'll see, she's here, I believe, but I couldn't see, but we will. Um, so a couple of questions to director. Number one, I know the, the vaccine program is starting already and for now and the 15 days from now for all the 16 plus. It is going to be, I'm sure, massive crowded or appointment uh, is going to be get flooded. Is there a city staff that are enough uh, do it or is there any other um, additional staffing is needed on that? Because I have seen some areas where it gets flooded. Um, with a lot of people and then they even stand in line even after the appointment kind of. Uh, so I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe the city has enough planning or staffing to handle these. So the county is handling the vaccination um, down at the fairgrounds um, and the, the other avenues that are being utilized are through health care providers. And so um, I did get, I did hear on the news earlier this evening that um, Santa Clara County did receive an additional 31,000 um, first dose vaccinations um, this week. So hopefully they'll be able to facilitate um, more first um, round shots. So it's, I, I've been to the fairgrounds and I did not experience that, but I don't know if at different healthcare providers, there's a different instance. Or oh, maybe I think my question, sorry, I should have made it. This is for at the senior center. So we are opening it up at the senior center for a testing, right? Not Just for, for testing. vaccination. Just for testing. Only for testing, not for vaccination. Yes, correct. And the county is also facilitating the testing at the senior center. We're just a, a host site. Okay, got it. Thank you. The other one is just a comment. And I, I just heard, but I couldn't locate in the in the uh, slide, something about Bobati um, gift card for Bobati, $200. Is that true? Is that right? It's a nice incentive, but no, just, I think it was, was it, there was a $10 gift card at a 25. Is it a 20? I'm going to have to go back to my slide. I'll be back to you momentarily. Okay. That's fine. I said $200. I said, oh my God, I don't know what I'll do with it if I get, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. That's just a comment. Thank you. That's all. I think $200 was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> that's how much we so. approved for one of our community partners. Maybe. <laughs> So any more questions for the director? Okay, then let's go on to commission reports. I know Commissioner Begora has one. <laughs> Just waiting. I know what do you, yes. <laughs> yes, I have found my notes. I have found my papers. Yes, I have, uh, I have the update from the mayor's meeting. So uh, I'll try to just keep it brief, two points about each, and then we can go on from there. Uh, uh, so basically, the uh, Janki Choshki was uh, representing the Fine Arts Commission. She says um, they're trying to make a proposal to the city council to, to be able to figure out how to collaborate with us and the library commission on something called Art Talk. So our talk will sort of bring, they're hoping will bring visibility to artists and be able to have interviews with them. And then these interviews will be viewed live. Obviously, this is just thoughts at this point, I think. Um, so uh, we don't, I don't know any more detail than that. Uh, the second point on their, uh, from their perspective is the art in unexpected places. So the first wall is being painted apparently as of whenever the mayor's commission was, uh, mayor's meeting was, it was right now at that point in the Blackberry Farm. So, uh, and then the commission is looking at identifying the second wall for this, uh, for this program. Uh, since this was the change, uh, this was the point where they added new commissions, this commission got two new commissioners at this point. 
Um, the teen commission, Zehra Nakwi was representing them. Um, the commission was looking at creating an e-sports program, which is quite interesting. And they're also looking at sending out a message to, uh, to talk to the teens about the negative effects of smoking and vaping and reducing the secondhand smoke and things like that. So they're hoping that this message will be something that is interactive. So they'll have it as a, some kind of a contest, maybe an art contest or a video contest, and then bring the message out to, to the teens that way. Uh, the bike and pad had a lot of updates, um, so they're continuing to figure out, I'm sorry, Gerhard, um, I'm going to butcher his name, Astral Beck um, uh, was representing them, commission um, was looking at, uh, um, you know, basically improving Cupertino's roads uh, for bicycling and pedestrians, so they were looking at the McClellan was one of the improvement projects down, there was some I believe uh, the first phase on the east side of Cupertino has been completed, and they're working on some new projects, including the Regnart uh, Creek Trail. Um, so those are the two points in it, and they had um, they uh, they've also got two new commissioners. Uh, the mayor, Paul, had a suggestion to them if they wanted to maybe open up, if they had perhaps the appetite to open up um, the discussion to the public uh, to get, you know, input and outreach to the community, specifically about the Carmen Road project. I guess there was a lot of discussion on previous bike, bike ped uh, commissions with regard to the Red Dog Trail. So um, does uh, Gerhard believes that the commission is still looking for outreach? Um, so uh, they will they will inform the public when it's um, when they're ready for that. Uh, from the Tick Commission, we had Naidu Bolineri. Uh, the work uh, the, they were looking at some work program uh, projects, uh, pilot up the projects are being reviewed. Um, there was um, they had a subcommittee on the 5G uh, program, and which they've disbanded down. I guess the the planning and the um, the city council are looking at it. Um, they've also reached out to the city of Fulton, I guess, to figure out about their fiber program to see what they can learn from them to see if they can uh, implement it here. Um, we had Vikram Saxena from uh, planning. Um, so one of the biggest things that the commission uh, apparently did this year was to pass an amendment to the Cupertino Municipal Code to incentivize um, the development of affordable housing by allowing for a density bonus of up to 40%. Um, they also had a very, very long discussion around 4G, what are the concerns, you know, should they have it around commercial areas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, they are still in the process of how do we do it, where do we do it, et cetera. And they added three new members to their team. Um, uh, library Commission was uh, re represented by Quinn Penn. Um, the good news is the library lobby is open. They're going to limit it to 10 minutes per person. So, and that's, uh, that's interesting. They formed uh, two subcommittees. One was the digital divider where they want to focus um, on closing um, the digital divide or the digital gap between the juniors, I mean, the, uh, kids and seniors, I guess. And then another um, the idea being discussed is about uh, device charging around the city field hall. Of course, their biggest project is the library expansion program, so they're very busy with that. And they've added three new commissions uh, commissioners to their team. We had uh, Ram Mohan from Sustainability. He was primarily talking about uh, two new volunteer student interns that are working on several programs. One was the Earth Day and the other one was Single Use Plastic uh, Initiative. Um, also, uh, they, were, they put some information apparently about Cupertino's uh, climate change on the city's website and uh, they're trying to make it fun for folks to use local resources uh, to make an impact on the climate. Uh, housing was uh, represented by Sue Pose. 
And one of the one of the biggest challenges, obviously, for our city is just you know addressing the homelessness in the area. So what they um, you know it's it's a difficult topic and it's a it's a very um, you know involved topic. But one thing they were able to achieve uh, and will continue to be doing is to provide sanitary stations for the homeless people and that are living in those encampments. Um, so West Valley basically gives them points to use those, um, to use for laundry and things like that. And then uh, I guess uh, Pacific, uh, there was some discussion about Pacific West community applied for BMR capital housing projects for Westport. I'm not very clear about that. And they're asking the city for funding to help fund that. Uh, but, but I think there's more in information that needs to be obtained on that. I guess that covers all the commissions that were there. Terrific, thank you. Are there any other commission reports? Don't. I do. Uh, um, I attended the, uh, uh, with actually Commissioner Kumarapan, I end, attended the, and Director McGreeny attended the ethics training. Um, which is uh, for the folks in the audience, it's a requirement for um, everyone who manages this stuff, uh, city council members, commissioners, staff, everybody. Um, and it was, I, I thought it was really great. It was really informative and it provided uh, a lot of clarity in opaque um, situations. So it was really good, a lot of great resources and um, looking forward to make sure those rules are followed. Yeah. Great. Um, just following up on what Commissioner Begor said about art in unexpected places, um, I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Wow. So that is the art in unexpected places in uh, Blackberry Farm. As you can see, the, um, the eagle in the corner here is not quite complete. So I've been watching it day by day as, as it's getting filled in and it's just been remarkable to watch. So um, that's really been, been really fun to watch come alive. And in fact, to the left of this is another side of the, the building. There is another piece of this um, with some, with more nature as well as some maybe students with magnifying glasses um, exploring and looking at things. So it, it's really beautiful. So I just wanted to uh, I share that with you. Uh, maybe that will be my background one of these next times, once it gets really complete. Um, so I think that's all the commissioner reports. Okay, um, attendance at upcoming meetings. Um, Whitney, do we have the mayor's calendar for the mayor's meetings? Yeah, so they've uh, scheduled it to the second Wednesday of the month, I believe at it 5 or 5.30. 5.30? <laughs> I think it's 5.30 uh, regularly, so I'm, I'm not sure. That, that sounds about right. <laughs> um, so uh, Commissioner Bigor was the last one on our scheduled list. Um, if we get a new round of volunteers to attend. So that would be April, it was on Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday. So April so the, 14th. I can yes. do that one. Okay. And that's still on Zoom, I presume. Yeah, so you'll receive a link. Um, I'll let the city manager's office know who the attendees are and then they'll send the link. And the one, can we just get a volunteer for May just so we have that teed up? So Commissioner Tom Bay will take May. It'd be nice if we have at least yeah. two set up. Uh, I can take the next one after. Okay. For June? Yes. Okay. Okay. And anything on, oh, we future agenda setting. So we have another meeting a week from today. We get to do this all again. Not the same <laughs> thing, something new. Um, and so do you want to um, just give us a little heads up of what we'll be doing sure, on sure. Absolutely. Thursday? 
Um, so uh, I think we're on for six, no, 530 on the 8th. No, the 8th. Okay. Yes. Sorry. It's a busy week next week as well. Um, 530 on Thursday. And we are going to review uh, the field use policy as well as um, the new projects, uh, the new proposed projects for the CIP for fiscal year 21-22. So exciting. And this will, I, I hate to break it to you all, but this will be the last special meeting for a while. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to believe it. I, I probably just jinxed <laughs> myself, right? You know, as soon as I, I, today is 10 months today that I've been with Cupertino. And so once I get to a year, I'll figure out when I need to know when we need to do stuff. So hopefully I will have a better idea of when I need to bring you stuff. So again, I thank you guys for your patience with me. Um, and getting all these things to you, but we are checking off things off the work program. Yeah, Commissioner, maybe one quick comment, uh, uh, Chair Stanek, if it is okay. Sure. Commissioner Tampe may be feeling that she's already in the ninth year. I just wanted to let you know, because number of meetings had in now, eighth year is over, now she's on ninth year. So um, I just wanted to make sure. That... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> No, I love it. I'm the one who recommended that we make permanent twice a month meetings. So I, I could, I've been doing this for eight years for free. So it's, you know, I traveled back from Africa for one day to attend our commission meeting in person and then flew back to India. So nobody can tell me I'm not dedicated. <laughs> oh, there's the doggy. <laughs> Okay, is there any other business for tonight? I don't think so. There's nothing else on the agenda, so that's all we can talk about. Um, so I will adjourn the meeting at 926. Thank you all. Thanks, awesome. everybody. Excellent. And I didn't see the cry at all, Director Giovanni.